Hello, everybody, and welcome to this virtual open event. My name is Nigel Ketley, and I'm a university associate professor in education and social science. Today, I'll be talking to you about leveling up from a sociological perspective. My background is as a sociologist of education, and my research interests are educational attainment at GCSE and A-level, widening participation to higher education, uh, theory development in education studies, and more recently, the design of inclusive curricula. What I'd like to start with this afternoon is talking to you about leveling up in terms of how we define it. So leveling up has become a term used frequently in politics, and it's been described as Boris Johnson's big idea for tackling social and economic inequality in post-Brexit Britain. But what I want to do is unpack that and find out what it means. So levelling up was mentioned in the 2019 Conservative Party manifesto, but it wasn't defined in that document. Nor is levelling up a new idea. It's been knocking around in Parliament since the 1860s when it was used to describe uh, religious inequality between Catholics and members of the Church of England. More recently, Theresa May has actually made quite an interesting observation in Parliament when criticising New Labour's education policy. She said that socialism is about levelling down, conservatism is about levelling up. Socialists believe that if everyone can't have something, no one shall. Conservatives reject that. So the idea of levelling up is being used there to draw a political distinction between the main parties. If we want to find an actual definition of levelling up, we actually have to look at the Queen's speech in 2021, where the government provided this umbrella definition of levelling up as something which is about improving living, living standards, growing the private sector, increasing and spreading opportunity, improving health, education and policing, strengthening local leadership and the community. Now, this umbrella term catches just about every aspect of government social policy, and it becomes what I'll describe later as a chimera, chimera, a fantastic beast for including every element of what the government does. The idea of levelling up was actually outlined in the white paper published in 2022, levelling up the United Kingdom. And I've really emphasised here the idea of the United Kingdom because the government are emphasising trying to keep the country united at a time in post-Brexit Britain, where, for example, Scotland wants independence. And in this document, they map regional disparities and inequalities. So there's an exhaustive set of descriptions about skills inequalities, productivity inequality between different regions, poverty, income, life expectancy inequalities between areas of the North and South. And unsurprisingly, areas in the North are found to um, be unequal and less advantaged. And then the document actually goes on to try and explain and evaluate these disparities or inequalities, drawing on the idea of six forms of capital. We don't have time here today to define every one of them, but the six types of capital mentioned are physical capital, human, intangible capital, financial capital, social capital, institutional capital. And to give you some idea what they mean, uh, human capital is talking about training, skills, education, knowledge, creativity. It's worth actually having a look at the document, which you can get online. What the remainder of the white paper then actually goes on to do is it sets out an exhaustive policy programme or agenda for levelling up the United Kingdom by 2030. And it sets targets in each of the main areas to try and promote more equality between different regions. 
So for example, one of the areas it focuses on is improving pay, productivity and employment. What can the government do to actually make sure areas in the north um, see improved levels of pay and productivity? One of those areas is also research and development spending. How can we increase research and development spending outside of the southeast by 40%? Other areas covered in the white paper are reducing educational attainment gaps and increasing apprenticeship training and other forms of training in the regions to tackle disparities or inequalities. Reducing the gap in um, healthy life expectancy. If you live in areas of the north, your life expectancy is substantially shorter than if you live in advantaged areas of the south. And the final one I'd pick up on, and this relates to the idea of the United Kingdom. Um, the levelling up white paper seeks to promote devolution to the regions of England, for example, by creating local mers and by creating simplified funding for the regions of England. So just to sum up, we have a document looking at the nature of disparities and then setting a policy agenda to achieve more equality. If you're like me and you're actually interested in seeing what this means in reality, you can go to the government website about implementing levelling up and it gives you a huge amount of detailed information. The government's levelling up fund uh, totals £4.8 billion, pounds, so we're talking about substantial amounts of money here. It's administered by the Department for Levelling Up Housing and the Communities. And in October 21, the levelling up fund actually allocated £1.7 billion pounds of funding to regional projects. And again in January 2023, a further £2.1 billion. Pounds. So sociologists are dealing with sort of substantial issues here. And if you want to see how the money is spent, you can click on the link I've provided and search for levelling up projects in your own region uh, depicted on the map I've provided on this screen. Most of the levelling up funding goes to regional projects focusing on infrastructure like transport, city centre regeneration, but there is some investment in heritage and cultural areas. I did look up Cambridge when um, I visited the website and there are no levelling up, up projects in Cambridge at all. Uh, that might be unsurprising given that Cambridge is a reasonably wealthy city. But in my own city of Hull, it's been granted um, 19 million pounds for city centre regeneration. So as a sociologist, how might we think of levelling up and what's wrong with the idea? Well, the whole white paper has been heavily criticised by commentators. The notion of levelling up has been described as an ill-defined policy. The paper has co cobbled together. Stone actually spots that some elements of the paper are plagiarised from Wikipedia, worth following up that yourself. But I think for me, the worst thing about the levelling up agenda is it's a chimera, chimera. What I mean by that is it's a fantastic beast. It's ideologically confused. It speaks to social democrats about let's tackle deprivation. It speaks to social liberals about let's promote equality. It speaks to economic liberals and neoliberals about the free market and free ports, for example. And it speaks to conservatives about reuniting the nation. Now, this is a problem because basically the white paper and the policy is trying to be all things to all voters, and it doesn't have a clear focus. Intellectually, of course, the paper is also grounded in various forms of capital, like social capital, human capital, and these ideas are taken from quite disparate intellectual traditions and fused together without a coherent intellectual base to them, um, which makes the sort of multidisciplinary nature of the paper somewhat confused. On a more practical level, 
authors like Tumani and Pike have actually argue, argued that the impetus for levelling up was basically about an electoral calculation. It was about protecting conservative seats, former red wall seats held by Labour. It wasn't about tackling deep-seated inequality. Likewise, the implementation of the levelling up fund and policy has been criticised by commentators as being partisan. If you read the BBC review of the distribution of fundings, I think it's too simple to say it's simply partisan, because by some measures, such as total funding, it seems quite partisan. If we use other measures like funding per head, less so. But social scientists like Connolly et al. et al. have actually identified the ways in which it will be difficult in the long term to evaluate the efficacy of levelling up projects. Finally, um, authors like Marmot, the well-known um, health commentator, has actually pointed out that policies to level up health inequalities are a missed opportunity because the paper ignores the fundamental causes of poverty and deprivation and the effects of austerity after 2010. So to sum up from my perspective, the issue with leveling up is lots of criticisms have been leveled at it, but we don't yet have the evidence to fully judge the policy. If you're interested in studying sociology, as I am, then the Institute of Continuing Education is going to offer a new undergraduate certificate in sociology from October 2023, focusing on the history of sociology as a discipline, issues of social inequality, and contemporary issues in social policy, like Brexit leveling up the COVID pandemic. So I'd absolutely love to see you there um, and see you participate in sociological debates and discussions. A final word from me, um, we're about to take question and answers now in the live session, so please feel free to type any questions that you have in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Thanks a lot.